President Biden's rush to green agenda is unaffordable, completely impractical, and is harming everyday Americans. This was made clear from news that broke earlier this week about a multi-state road trip this summer led by Secretary Granholm, which was intended to promote electric vehicles. And here are just a few of the headlines from her trip. Electric cars have a road trip problem, even for the Secretary of Energy. Another one, on an EV road trip to promote green tech, the US Energy Secretary and her entourage couldn't find enough electric vehicle chargers. And another, irate family called police on Jennifer Granholm's team for blocking charging station spot for her electric car. Apparently, the Secretary's staff discovered what we know most of the country lacks the necessary vehicle charging infrastructure for EVs, especially in rural areas. If President Biden's own energy secretary can't travel smoothly in an EV, how can this administration promise to ensure millions of children are able to get around in EV school buses? As part of the administration's taxpayer-funded spending spree to force EVs on Americans, the Environmental Policy Agency, or Protection Agency, EPA, is trying to entice our school districts into adopting electric school buses through its $5 billion clean school bus program. We should all be worried about the way the EPA is implementing this program. The IIJA requires that 50% of the awards under this program are to be used for replacing existing school buses with zero emission school buses that produce no emissions of any air pollutant or greenhouse gas. The other 50% are to be used for replacing existing school buses with clean school buses, defined as a bus that reduces emissions and uses an alternative fuel, like propane, or as a zero emission school bus. Unfortunately, the EPA appears to be favoring unreliable and expensive electric school buses. We're talking two to three times the cost over clean school buses. The federal government should not be in the business of picking winners and losers. And what happens when the federal subsidies run out? Will school districts be able to continue charging, maintaining, and repairing these expensive buses? Will there even be a market for them without the federal government grants and rebates? The fact is, these vehicles are more expensive, and, are, and the limited charging infrastructure and operational limitations, especially as a result of extreme weather, make these buses completely impractical in many parts of the country. The administration's force electric transition will make us more dependent on China, which dominates the EV battery market and supply chains for critical materials necessary to build electric vehicles. Earlier this year, the EPA's Office of Inspector General, OIG, launched an audit of this program to examine whether potential supply chain or production delays could ne negatively impact the agency's ability to, to distribute funds. And this is just part of the unprecedented $102 billion the EPA received from the IRA and the IIJA. I had the opportunity to meet with the Inspector General last month to discuss the challenges ahead in OIG's efforts to safeguard taxpayer funds against waste, fraud, and abuse. And I look forward to continuing that important discussion today. Ensuring our children's safety should be the number one priority for any program looking to improve student transportation resources. The unprecedented amount of taxpayer dollars was spent last Congress. And Americans must know, must, there must be transparency as to how it's being spent. Beyond this program, I have broader concerns with the EPA. While the EPA was created by an executive order, Congress never actually authorized the EPA. And apparently, the EPA believes it, it, it many times, it doesn't have to take direction from Congress. I fear that it has replaced its own core mission of protecting human health and the environment with a harmful political agenda to force an energy transition onto American families and businesses who will suffer. I hope today's hearing will shed more light on this, which will unfortunately ultimately help us restore accountability at the EPA. I yield back. Chairwoman yields back. Now recognize the ranking member of the full committee, Mr. Pallone, for his five-minute opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.